Welcome, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Scott, I'm your host. Welcome to another video from Go Small Live Large. We are a YouTube channel dedicated to the RV lifestyle, van life, sharing with you the learnings from the roads, over 30 states, 40,000 miles. Been full-time in this rig since 2019, February. Today you're gonna see a, a live Q and A replay with our paid partner, Embassy RV. Embassy RV does Class B RVs similar to this in three chassis, Ford Transit, Sprinter, and Ramp ProMaster, which is what this is. What makes them innovative, in my opinion, is their workmanship, their quality of materials, and in this video, we talk about controlled custom. You get what you want within the confines of this space and how Terry, VP at Embassy RV, wants to build it for you. Let's get into it. So welcome again, this is our our second teleconference with uh, Terry Minix of Embassy RV and Rich, thank you. And uh, thank you channel audience. You guys are just the most amazing folks. So Terry, maybe just give a little state of the industry from your perspective and state of Embassy RV in particular. And then uh, let's uh, get some topics rolled out to so get ready to do that. Terry, please. Well, the industry is coming alive again. That's good news. We are actually back in production not all of our vendors are so you know folks ask me you know when will their vehicle be done we tried to stock up before this but it caught us all by a surprise a little bit so about 20 percent of the vendors still aren't back uh, some of them won't be back until the second week of may just because of where they're at and remember i don't buy everything from elkhart so even though elkhart is coming back i get things from the east coast in the yachting industry a lot and the east coast isn't coming back yet so uh, so we're still working with a few of those things, but we are in production. You know, we can take vehicles to a certain point, and then we're just waiting for the, some of the companies to come back. Uh, what's the general consensus in Elkhart? Is this the RV business is, uh, industry is kind of in a 2008 scenario again, or is there everybody pretty optimistic? What's the overall feel? I think it's optimistic. Um, the RVs are deemed essential right now because a lot of the first responders don't want to live in their houses, um, they, so they're putting a travel trailer or a van or something in the driveway sometimes right now, and they get to live in a nice RV instead of in a tent or a tree house like we see on TV sometimes. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, it's looking very optimistic. Hey Scott. Yes sir. My, my wife is an engineer for another uh, large RV company and she's you know, been working from home, but she's there's plenty of stuff going on you know, with the company she's working for. So. Uh, I'd say things are still, you know, churning along despite all of the uh, the chaos. That's great to hear. That that gives me some confidence that this is going to spring back pretty quick. Uh, the RV well, is like guys... a sign of that always, isn't it? Because on the last recession, the RVs got hit first, yeah. and it was kind of a sign of things to come in Elkhart. So when Elkhart's still optimistic, it's kind of a good sign for everybody. So let's talk floor plans. A number of you are asking in chat. Thank you for that. It's a great place to put these. Is floor plans. So Terry. Maybe talk about, you have three floor plans now, is that? What I'm realizing in, in what we do and the coolness of what we do, it, I'm sitting in the sportsman and the sportsman has this wonderful counter across from me. Uh, we have a lot of single travelers and we have sister travelers and stuff where they don't want to sleep next to each other, but they want to travel in the same vehicle. What we're learning is we can take a embassy traveler, the PRL, TRL, whichever, we're going to call that the travel. And we can actually mix and match cabinet sequences. So if you love this cabinet right here and you want to put it where the sofa is in the traveler and go with one sofa, whether it's this sofa or the other sofa, and still have the pantry, the nice refrigerator, the linen closet, and everything you see on this side, we're able to kind of mix and match and make multiple formats of vehicle without any difficulty to us. The sportsman and the traveler, the sportsman is you know, a cabinet over here on this side, and we have a few less cabinets uh, in the back. We don't have the big refrigerator. We have the chest refrigerator. I can show you a little bit here. Um, you know, when we open the slider door, the chest refrigerator works from the inside and outside. This TV, I'm waiting on the bracket. That company hasn't come back to life yet, but this TV will swing around and go out the door. Um, it's got this nice cabinet here. But when you go to the center, we have the two cabinets, not the big refrigerator and the pantry, but we're leaving room and Terry. I have one here. Terry. Leaving room. Yeah. Yeah, the camera's not connected. We just see you standing around. Oh. 
I, oh, I, I hate Jim. No, we can see it. Oh, okay. You're, you're fine. It's on this one, guys. Uh, but there's a place for a bike in the back across from the toilet in this one. And like I say, we can, we're just trying to give a real versatile vehicle with this sportsman and that you can store bikes inside, you know, and uh, it still has a porch and tent and still has the same kitchen, but it's just a little bit, little bit different from the traveler. So can you kind of cover ventilation, AC, and the window ventilation system? We, we order all the vans, window vans from the factory because it makes it look more, less like an RV, I guess is the best way to put that. When somebody wants ventilation in those windows, we actually hire the glass doctor and we have a beautiful window that comes out of the Netherlands uh, that we change the slider door in the window right across from the slider door to a sliding window with a screen. And that gives you ventilation. I don't use the awning windows that a lot of folks use because they have big knobs and levers that don't let me do the blinds like you see behind me built into the wall that really helps block out heat from the window. So that's the reason this is done that way. But we have roof fans that we can do from Max Air. And I also in this one have the four corner fans built into the side upper wall of the vehicle for ventilation two in, two out. So we can give you a lot of ventilation without having to actually open a window. And the air conditioner part of it, Scott, this yep. one has a split system air conditioner where there's nothing on the roof. Cause I'm gonna, I am working on the luggage rack. We just built a, our first version of it on a sprinter I sent you pictures of. Um, this one has a split system that's ducted out of the cabinets. Half of it's below floor, half of it's underneath this desk system I have here. And it keeps the roof clean and it's the same air conditioner just split, not on the roof. A lot of people ask me, you know, can I get the mid roof forward because I don't want the vehicle to be that tall. If you think about it, without an air conditioner on the roof, this one's shorter than a mid roof with an air conditioner on the roof. So you get the upper cabinets, you get all the extra storage. I'm kind of trying to shy away from the mid roof because you lose all these upper cabinets right here and all this storage because you just don't have the height to put it in. So those kind of things affect other things we do in the vehicle. Hey Scott, I've got a picture of that vent system on the outside queued up. If I can share my screen for a minute, I can show everybody what that looks like. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a, there are these little, um, they're just little outside chrome vents that are up along the roof line that allow the air to flow in and out and circulate through that split system that Terry's talking about. That way there's no big air conditioner bump on the roof at all. And so the vehicle actually ends up being, you know, not as tall and a lot less conspicuous as far as being, you know, an RV. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Rich, I'll point out on that picture since it's there, look underneath the vehicle too and look under my running boards. You don't see anything. There's nothing below the running board line that hangs down at all. You can't tell anything's under that vehicle. Uh, just a question on that ventilation system. So how does it, where does it come into the vehicle itself? I see, you, you know, those uh, vent ports that you have on the side. Are they like ducted inside somehow yeah. or? Yeah, they do duct through those ports. We actually, for the screen in that, because those are meant for a yacht, those are for an engine compartment vent to vent an uh, engine of a, a boat. So what we do is we buy those stainless steel screens that you put in your sink to catch all your garbage <laughs> and it mounts in there perfectly and it's like a sombrero. So it's a really nice big surface screen to keep the bugs and things out. And then the hose runs slightly uphill through that, and then we have a brushless motor from uh, a real good company that has like 50,000 life hours on it. That's, it's basically your computer fan on steroids that we put a multiple speed controller with, and it's built right in line with the vent. So the wall is only about this thick right there, but we're able to screen, do the scuffer, uphill hose vent and blow that out in that amount of space the way that's created. Do two in, two out. So the one in the bathroom in the back in Rich's picture is out. The one over the slider door is also out. The one in the front driver's side is in and the one on the passenger rear is in. So you could turn on just the front ones if you want and have air flowing through or you can turn on all four and you get cross air flowing through the whole vehicle. There's no heat that sits up in the ceiling. So most people are doing fine without windows that open. 
Usually. I don't put windows in very often. Once in a while, just because somebody has to have it. After I talk to them a year later, they've hardly ever opened up. Point with the ducted system. Now we put our air conditioner on the center of the vehicle. That one's in the back. Um, in the ducted system, I get to run the ducts wherever I want to go. So if you want ducts ran back to the porch and tent because you're going to have people sleeping back there, we just run a couple of ducts and let it blow back there too. But right now I have two here and I have one down low in the back. Uh, but we'll blow them out into the porch and tent too, and it's ducted. Um, it'll be comfortable back there when you're sleeping as well. So all that will be like a house. It's going to be more even temperature. Terry, I'm looking at the chats, and there's a, a, a number of questions around insulation. People are always very curious about these rigs being insulated well, and I will add to that being four season. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, you know, in – if you do the math, you know, the math comes out different from reality on this insulation. Yes, it's probably one and a half to two um, on the R value each, but the reality is when we created this insulation, and I did it uh, back in 2003, I did five layers of it. We cut out one of our window cutouts and we simulated the exact same scenario we do in the van. We put a heat lamp on it and ran 150 degrees for about eight hours and kept doing laser temperatures on the inside and it was room temperature the whole time. It never changed. And that was five layers. We do eight layers now. So each time you do the bubble, the foil, the bubble, the foil, it starts getting where it can't get through as much. So by the time it gets to the other side, um, and you can see I cover every nook and cranny, there's nothing open. But the reason I really did this originally was because I had a vehicle getting an accident many, many years ago and we had to take it apart so they could do the body work. And when I pulled the fiberglass insulation that you use in your house that everybody was using and they still use, there was moisture trapped in that. And the inside of the vehicle had a little rust film starting on it. So I had to alcohol the whole inside of the vehicle and zinc primer it and, and make sure I took care of that problem. And I never used fiberglass insulation ever again. And when they take the R11 fiberglass insulation, it's actually thicker than the sidewalls of the van. They have to compress it. Anytime you compress insulation, you just took away some of the R value. So this is so much better than anything else out there because it doesn't wick moisture. It doesn't hold moisture. It doesn't hold odors. The moisture is the road soot and all the nasty odors you smell in a used vehicle years later. We're seeing our vehicles, and, and you can attest to that, Rich, when Vernon and Kate came back, 170,000 miles. They've been in every state, uh, state in the continental U.S., 10 years old vehicle, and it still smelled new. And that's what that does for you. You don't end up with the musty smelling vehicles years later. You don't. So tell us about Control Custom. I, I say it's you get whatever you want as long as it's the way I want to build it. <laughs> and that's kind of – so – if you want a cabinet, the cabinet's going to be built like this cabinet. If you want a certain size, that's not a problem as long as it's built like this cabinet. If you want this cabinet here and you want a different sofa here and you want a, a cabinet, you know, that's these cabinets. So we can mix and match, like I was saying early on in the event, from different types of vehicles. We can say, okay, let's take something from what we're going to call our dual traveler and put it in the traveler. That's not a problem, you know, so I think we can give as much versatility as anybody would want. Do I want to do a bed that powers down from the ceiling? That's probably not going to happen, you know, because you lose so much over storage. I, I just am probably not going to do that. That's other people's thing. But can we build an elevated bed in the back that makes into a desk for people to sleep apart from much each other? Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to be prototyping that very soon. I actually brought the vehicle and we're starting to prototype that. Um, so uh, we're also doing what I'm calling a single traveler or a solo traveler. Uh, I've got a, a customer talking to me that they'll, they'll never have anyone else in the vehicle with them. Um, and that's where we're talking about taking this cabinet across from me and moving it forward where the other sofa would be, but still give everything in the back that the, the regular traveler has with the pantry and the table storage and the beautiful Nova Cool refrigerator and the linen closet and the wardrobe closet. Uh, Cause he's going to go for long trips for long periods of time and, he used to live on a catamaran, a 32-foot catamaran, for 30 years, and he's now going into one of the vans and wants to travel land instead of water because he gets a little older. So, fun guy uh, out of Arizona. So, those are the kind of things that we promise with Controlled Custom is we'll try to make your dream come true. You live in it, not us. 
as long as we can do it that it doesn't really you know mess with production too bad um, and i like your innovative design process but i am concerned about the um a few different things like since you don't have black tanks you have a macerator system you'd be constantly emptying the tanks instead of every couple of days and instead of every couple of weeks like for a single person like myself um do you do you offer that uh custom with say a larger tank system well what we're doing right now and the number one toilet is not the cassette toilet anymore. I will tell you 95% of everyone buying from us right now are going to the Labio dry flush toilet because there's absolutely no black water. There's no venting. There's a garbage bag system. It gives you 17 flushes and you pull the garbage bag around, you throw it in the trash like you're picking up after your dog and, and there's absolutely no black water. Um, it, it's an incredible toilet and you can order bag system that comes with three pack of 17 bags and you can have them sent to a UPS anywhere along your trip and pick them up at a UPS store. You don't have to carry a ton of them. And it's, it's incredible. I got to tell you, it's a beautiful system and it's in this one here. If you understand what a diaper genie is, if you've ever seen those where you put the, the diaper into the thing and it basically twists that bag and seals it, pushes it down and opens it up for the next load. So it's basically just like a twist system to where it twists that off, pushes it down and opens up the next level. So your waste is all basically below you in that toilet and you'll never smell it, you'll never see it again. You'll always have a clean bowl once you know, you're ready to go to the next step. And you don't have to clean a bowl and that's something yeah. that the lid I took off is all you wipe down ever if you have to wipe anything. It's a new bowl every time. I mean, it's the least amount of work of, as a toilet you'll ever see in an RV. And but one of the things that you said um, at the last session is that those um, flush bags were $34 to $38 for three of them. Where do you get them for that price? I looked online and they were in the 50s. I, I think the price actually is um, $49 from when you buy them from Lavio. And Lavio will, I believe, ship them anywhere you want them shipped. Um, they're out of the East Coast, but I think it's actually $49 for a, a set of three. Um, and if you have to, you can get them from us. We're going to stock them. And if you wanted to call in here, you know, we're not going to mark them up. Uh, I know I don't pay more than that for them. Maybe he gives me a better price than what you're seeing online, but that's something that we would pass along. If I'm paying $38, you'll pay $38 if you want them from us. That's a, a service we would give to you to make that uh, work that way. And I'll double check that for you, but we probably pay $38 or in that range for a pack of three. That's a pack of three that's there's 17 flushes per pack, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm given five packs with each vehicle. It that's comes cool. with two with the toilet and I buy a pack of three and give it along with it. So you get five sets when you leave here. And the, to put the, the charge of the bags in, in some perspective, so if you have a black tank, so I have a, a Travato GL, so my waste tank is 12 gallons of black and 11 of gray. And so pretty small tanks. I go about four days and using the facilities for number one, number two, solid for those days. Um, I'm not like going to, to gas station stuff to go potty. I'm actually using the facility. Um, I've found uh, RV parks, um, usually 15 to 20 bucks to empty a tank. And a, a couple of them have been like a flying J is like 10 bucks, but normally it's 15 to $20. So depending on how much you're using that. And Terry, I think you'd mentioned last time you talked about Lavio is if you're just urinating only, and certainly for boys, ladies kind of have a little different program, but you know, if you throw some absorbent material in there, you wouldn't need to flush urine only every time, right? So you can get a few more flushes um that way but i mean if you start to do the math on it it sounds expensive but you're probably gonna spend half that much anyway at least on just rv dumps and none of the black tank headaches are associated with that even the chemicals for the, the black tanks i mean those are probably what do you think jerry 10 probably 15 20 bucks per bag and yeah you get 10 tank things i mean you start doing the math on it it's the difference is pretty small for the convenience factor can i come to elkhart and you take my black tank i'll do a trade-in on my toilet <laughs> And, and I'm doing that. You know, that's one of our promises is as we evolve, you're not going to be left in the dark, you know, and that's what uh, Carl and Kathy are doing on Tuesday. You know, he watched our video and 
stuff we did on the Labio and they're coming in Tuesday and we're pulling out the cassette and putting in the Labio for them. And, you know, that, that's a service we'll do. You know, I'm going to charge him the cost of the Labio, but we're going to absorb the rest of it. And that's part of our continual uh, promise to the customers. You know, five years from now, if things change, this vehicle is designed to adapt to that. Uh, we can keep you up to date. So I hope you enjoyed that video with uh, Terry and the team and your questions answered live on our teleconference using the tool Zoom. We have these on a regular basis now. You'll want to go to my website, go small, live large, and you will, dot com, and you will want to uh, check out the events page there. It's right on the home page, and you will see um, the next upcoming live Q&A with Embassy RV. Uh, we have a lot of things planned uh, in the second half of 2020. Uh, around embassy uh, some live meetups some campouts a lot of really cool stuff so visit my site visit their site uh, embassyrv.com and check out their youtube channel subscribe to them they put out content um, on a different schedule than i do and even different content than i do uh, my my uh, mantra here at go small live large is learn and share and i'm just really uh, blessed to have them as my partner to uh, be able to share uh, their amazing product so with that, uh, I thank you for watching. Give it a thumb up if you got something out of it. As always, comment. Reach out to the Embassy RV directly. Go to their uh, website, fill out the contact form, and they are really, really good about um, getting back with you. Tell them Scott from Go Small Live Large sent you, and, um, and you'll be happy you did. So with that, I thank you again, and wish you to live happy, live free, live RV. See ya.